God is good. We are at it again. He remains God and we remain his children. We are still on the man Elisha. Elisha means Yahweh is my salvation. The man asked for a double portion and God granted it to him and he performed greatly. God used him mightily. It's my prayer that God continues using us mightily in his vineyard like he used the prophet Elisha. And so we continue with him. We, in the last episode, we looked at Elisha performing godly acts to a poor widow with her two sons who were to be sold as slaves because of the date that the husband had left. Now, this time, we do a comparison. Elisha now meets a person who is the opposite of the other one. But she had her own challenge. In as much as the old the woman who was a widow, she might not have been old, but she was a widow, a vulnerable person, troublesome. I mean, troubled person, sad, vulnerable. She had her challenge. Now we go ahead and look at Elisha's encounter with somebody else, but has a lot of lessons that lives with us because we deal, we are, in the, we are doing these epi episodes in, I mean, finding God is what we are after. So now we are saying, as the poor w woman, widow, found God, so we are asking, how does the rich woman find God? And so it still remains a lesson to us in whichever situation that the word of God can, may find you. And so this is 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 8. It's a long one, but I just want to read a few verses to give us the background of what I'm talking about because we must base ourselves on the word of God. Now, the Bible says, one day Elisha went on to Shunem where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed by that way, he would turn in there to eat food. The woman requested Elisha to pass by and eat some food. She was well off. She didn't ask for anything, but she was saying, please come and eat something. And in verse 9, the Bible said that, and he said to her husband, that behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there to sleep. One day he came there, this is Elisha now again, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. Now, verse 12 of the Bible says, And he said to his servant Gehaz, Call this Shunammite. When he called her, she stood before him. And in verse 13, And he said to her, Say now to her. You mean Elisha telling Gehaz, his servant, to talk to the woman. And this is in verse 13. And say, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? It's the same question. What is to be done for you? And would you have a word spoken to your, on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? It's a question that comes to the woman. But she said, I dwell among my own people. She lacked nothing. I have my own people. I have my own wealth. So in verse 13, she says, mm -mm, for me, I'm among my own people. I do not lack anything. And Prophet Elisha still does not give up because he knew that there should be something in as much as this woman is wealthy, in as much as this woman is well off, there should be something that troubles her. And then verse 14, he and he said, what then is to be done for her? 
Elisha is asking his servant Gehaz. So Gehaz answered, well, this woman has no son and her husband is old. So the servant of Elisha had discovered the need in as much as they had everything, in as much as they had money, they had many people, but they were a couple that was barren, no child. And so, verse 15, Elisha said, call her. And when Gehaz had called her, she stood in the doorway. Now verse 16 is the point. And it's where I'm going to end and then we shall talk a few other things because the time may not be enough for us to elaborate this. It's a very important matter. And since you have a Bible, you read on and see. So in verse 16, he said, at this time, and this is why he took bigger interest because it connects with so many other scriptures as well. And so verse 16 says, at this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said to him, No, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But verse 17, true to his word, a miracle man, God working through such a person. In verse 17, but the woman conceived and she bore a son about that time the following spring, as Elisha had said unto her. Good news coming to her house. Even when she had the money, even when she had her people, even when she had her security, the husband old though, but she was still around, but they needed a child. And so Elisha mentions it to her by this time next year. But you also remember the same words that were spoken by the angels to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 when they passed by Abraham's house and Abraham welcomed them prepared something for them to eat and while they were still merry making and feeling good with the food the angels did pronounce one of them said by this time next year we shall be back here and your wife shall have a son and so that is Genesis chapter 18 verse 10. And so, friends, there is a huge lesson that we gather from hospitality. Someone welcoming a godly man. And these scriptures state a lot that this woman gets a child. You know, there are some people you talk to, someone says, I have everything. I have everything. But our life will never be fully content. Because in as much as you have the money, there could be something that you are lacking. In as much as you may be having a lot of education, you may be having something that you are lacking. In as much as you have whatever it is. So this woman, even when she said, I'm living among my own people, I have my own money. But Elijah, Elisha's servant discovered a need. They had no child in the house. And so this is a miracle that comes. And when we talk about Elisha being a prophet of miracles, this is one of them. But as you continue reading, the child is born and terror strikes in the house. The child falls sick and the Bible says instantly when he was with his father in the garden, he dies. Can you imagine receiving good news, smiling, and at the same time the child dies and the woman becomes devastated again. And she said, I wish this man of God didn't do anything like this to me. But one thing that she knew was she knew where Elisha was, praise the Lord. She knew where he was to find him and then she rushed. She saddled the town, the donkey, and said to her servant, ride it on. Let's go and look for the man of God. Knowing this is important, where your help comes from is where your heart will be. You run there, you get it, and it feels nice. You know, this woman went and rushed and found Elisha. Elisha tried to send Gehaz to go and place his staff, his stick on the child. But the woman said, well, as long as the Lord is still alive, I will not leave you. 
and that is um, that is in verse 30. He said, you know, as the Lord lives, and as you live yourself, I will not leave you. Friends, there are certain things that you don't give up like that. You stick on. You keep on. You insist. I have already in some episodes mentioned insist, persist, resist. And so this human resists and says, no, I want to go with you. And so in this finding God, there are certain things that you will not give up. You have to insist. And with God, he gives us lots of examples that we should never, never give up. And the reason why we shall say we shall never give up, as long as God is still our father, we look up to him and say, God, we shall not giving up. This woman never gave up on the, and Elisha, and Elisha moved and went and listened to me. The child was recovered. And as you read on verses following, 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 he came to the house and saw the child lying there. And so he went in and shut the door and the child was recovered. Exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Remember when he found the child dead in the house, people crying and he sent them out, get out. And Jesus gives us life lessons there. Elisha gives us life lessons there. And so we may find good times in our life, but at the same time, good times come with challenges. And, and as much as we get good things also, no, bad things also strike. And, but God who gives, God who grants you an opportunity to serve, to laugh, to, to, to cheer up. Yes, he comes in again and gives an opportunity. So friends, we come learning, studying, and taking life lessons from these biblical figures. Elisha is the man that we're talking about now. And... There are lots of encouraging things here. Now, when you are able to show kindness, please show it. When you are able to show compassion, please do it. When you are able to be hospitable, if you are able, do it. Because kindness is rewarded. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, and as much as there is an opportunity, do good. To everyone do good to everyone in our world we need people who do good the world is getting fewer and fewer people who do good we have stories that are flying everywhere people taking over things of the vulnerable people people doing lots of things that are not good to others elisha had a point to make to the man to the woman you know paying back what the woman had done but what she did you know ignited something in elisha's life he said but this woman has taken trouble to look after us like this what should we do for her and so we are talking about giving something and remember the other time i talked about double portion you know when you talk about a double portion it's not just you receive a blessing but as you receive a blessing you give so there is a secret in the double portion, receiving and giving. Now, Elisha received a blessing from God and he was giving direct to the community. And so many of us who are able to give something to the community, who are able to help others know God, let's go out there and do it. Let people see God is love in us. Elisha proved it. And this woman of Shunem saw God is love and she prepared the room and said, no, 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 the consistency of doing good is important so con the consistency is important is good so we want to thank god for those people that god is using variously to support the ministry and this woman supported elisha's ministry wherever he would pass around and the need was discovered but in the much as he discovered the prophet's need the prophet also discovered her need and it moved on so well so hospitality is good and in first peter chapter 4 verse 9 the Bible says, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And show hospitality, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And so God rewards. That's a very, very important lesson that he picked, that God rewards those who serve others. And I'm believing that as we serve, God rewards us. I am believing very heavily that as I serve, God is rewarding me. 
and also believe very heavily that as you serve, God will reward you. This woman of Shunem was rewarded. The child came, but even when he died, the prophet was still available. So God will find a way of handling your situation. He handles your situation. He handles my situation. So God is our father and he can make good our difficulties. God can make good our troubles. God can make good our challenges. God can make good our worries. And so I am believing the reason why I give a smile to what I'm reading about here is because God makes good of our troubles. And so this woman gives us a big, big lesson. So even when she lived in a content life, contentment, she said, I have everything, but there was a need. So everyone has a need, whether rich or poor, whether these powerful men and women you hear about in the world, they also have their peculiar needs that they, they, that they have within their heart. And it is only God who is the satisfier of all those needs. And so friends, the woman acted quickly. The woman moved very quickly. So when you have a challenge, don't sit on yourself. But she acted like other women have acted. You saw the other woman, you saw the, the widow that we talked about acting quickly. And so the point that we're making friends is that in finding God, we don't just sit like that. And finding means you do the searching, you do the knocking, and you do the asking. And that's actually what, what it means. And because actually Jesus says, ask and you receive, isn't it? Search and you'll find, isn't it? Knock and the door be opened. And this is for me, this makes the whole meaning for life of life. And in these episodes, this is something that actually we are trying to, you know, to encourage ourselves to do. Because we are not just created, put there, you know, to be idle to do nothing, this woman actually did something and she acted faster than the husband and ran to where the prophet was. So act, act, act. Is it prayer? Pray. Is it reading the word of God? Read. Is it doing something good? Do. As long as life is still here, try to do what God desires for you. And this is the purpose of man, the purpose of woman. And so act quickly. The time is short. The woman said, Saddle quickly, I want to go and reach where the man of God is. And she went, and that was the point. And so in Elisha's life, we shall still learn more and more from Elisha because he received a double portion. And we too yearn for a double portion from God. And you too yearn for a double portion from God. And so when you, re when you receive a double portion, he tries it doubly. Elisha did it doubly. And he was all the time serving and serving and serving. And as he served, there were people that were noticing that he was serving. And so we want to encourage our society, our communities to notice what God's people are doing and the good that they are doing. We move on the same page. This woman moved with Elisha on the same page. He was moving, doing ministry, but she was also doing her part. And in doing that, there was a need that was being met. They received something in their house and Elisha's ministry also continued. And so friends, may we act and may God enable us to do good to everyone. As we read in Galatians 6.10, do good. And may God enable you to do good. May God enable me to do good. This life is not long. We need to do something quickly and better, better and better and better. We get involved in our business, in God's business, he does ours. And I wanted to remember that, that do God's work and he'll do your work. And this woman did God's work and God did hers by giving her a son and even resurrecting him at the time that she needed it most. So God will do your work. Do God's work. Persist, insist, and then move on. And so friends, Elisha gives us lots, lots of lessons and shall keep in there. May God bless you and watch over you. As you think about this man, Elisha, and the chapters 2 to 5 in Second Kings is full of packed with these things, these miracles, these wonder workings. So we're going to, to dive into a little bit more. But for now is, may God bless you as you think about this Shunammite woman who did greatly and Elisha did greater by, need, by discovering a need and, and meeting it. And may God, who is our Father, unite our wills with, our, with His will and so that we shall be moving together. We find people 
moving along with this and ministry continues in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.